Uh, second, all right. Members of the Board of Trustees, uh, please respond present when you hear your name. Uh, Chairperson William C. Thompson, Jr. Present. Vice Chairperson Barry F. Schwartz is absent and excused. Trustee Michael Arvanites. Trustee Henry Berger. Present. Trustee Yuna Clark. Present. Trustee Lorraine Cortez Vasquez. She was there. She may still be muted. We'll come back. Trustee Fernando Ferrer. Here. Trustee Kevin Kim. Present. Trustee Myra Linares Garcia. Present. Trustee Robert Mojica. Yes. Great. Trustee Brian Oberfell. Present. Trustee Jill O'Donnell Tormey. Present. Trustee Charles Shorter. Kevin Kim. Trustee Present. Ken Sunshine. Trustee Myra Present. Lenaris Present. Uh, there's a background noise, guys, of, a, of the recording. I don't know what that is. Trustee Sandra Wilkin. Present. Trustee Martin Burke. Present. And Trustee Giovanni Picant. Present. Okay. And Trustee Shorter, did you join? Or Trustee Arvanides? Okay, Trustee Bill, you Shorter have a form. Okay. All right, he must be muted. Yep. Yeah, right. Gail, I this, fell this, off. I'm back. Okay, great. I'm glad you're back. Great. This public meeting of the City University of New York Board of Trustees is now called to order. On March 7, 2020, Governor Cuomo issued Executive Order 202, declaring a state of emergency in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. On March 13, 2020, Governor Cuomo issued Executive Order 202.1, which included a suspension of law allowing the attendance of meetings telephonically or other similar service. Article 7 of the Public Officers Law, to the extent necessary to permit any public body to meet and take such actions authorized by the law without permitting in public, in person access to meetings and authorizing such meetings to be held remotely by conference call or similar service, provided that the public has the ability to view or listen to such proceeding and that such meetings are recorded and later transcribed. In accordance with the executive order, this board meeting is being held by a teleconference with a live stream found at the CUNY Board of Trustees website. A copy of the calendar agenda of items is also available online at the CUNY Board of Trustees website. Additional items may be added during the meeting. As a reminder, please mute your phones so we can ensure that everyone can hear. Let me ask the secretary to take a roll call attendance for members of the chancellery. So members of the chancellery, please respond present when you hear your name. Chancellor Felix Matos Rodriguez. Present. General Counsel and Senior Vice Chancellor for Legal Affairs, Derek Davis. Present. Executive Vice Chancellor and University Provost, Jose Luis Cruz. Present. Executive Vice Chancellor and Chief Operating Officer, Hector Batista. Present. Senior Vice Chancellor for Institutional Affairs, Strategic Advancement and Special Counsel, Glenda Grace. Present. Senior Vice Chancellor and Chief Financial Officer, Matt Matthew Sapienza. Present. Senior Vice Chancellor for Labor Relations, Pamela Silverblatt. Present. Vice Chancellor and University Chief Information Officer, Brian Cohen. Present. Vice Chancellor for Communications and Marketing, Maite Unco. Vice Chancellor for Risk, Audit, and Compliance, Richard White. Present. Vice Chancellor for Human Resources Management, Dorian Gloria. Present. Interim Vice Chancellor for University Advancement, Andrea Shapiro Davis. 
present. And Interim Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Denise Maybank. Present. That's it. All right, thank you. On behalf of the CUNY Board of Trustees, let me welcome our newest trustee, Giovanni Picant. Uh, Giovanni was recently elected to serve as chair of the University Student Senate and student trustee for this academic year. Ms. Picant is a third year honor student attending New York City College of Technology, where she majors in law and paralegal studies. Ms. Picant is not new to the trustees as she previously served as vice chair of the University Student Senate and was a member of the Board of Trustees Student Affairs and Special Programs Committee. Welcome, Giovanni. We have an item later in the meeting to say farewell to Giovanni's predecessor, Timothy Hunter. And I'll have some more words to say about Timothy later also. And I know some of my colleagues will also. As you know, the CUNY Board of Trustees could not convene its October 19th, 2020 public hearing and Manhattan Borough hearing. Instead, the Office of the Secretary accepted written and video testimony and statements from concerned individuals on items on the calendar for this October 26, 2020 board meeting via email. Testimonies were accepted until 11.30 p.m. on Monday, October 19th, and shared with the trustees on October 22nd, 2020. A total of 20 written testimonies and six video testimonies were submitted. Students, faculty, and staff urged CUNY to consider implementing credit plus no credit for the fall 2020 semester and any semesters during the pandemic. They also expressed concerns about potential budget cuts and staff layoffs and requested a reduction in tuition. John Jay College of Criminal Justice reported on the success of the two-year-old completion for upper division students program. Over the last two years, 600 more students than projected earned their bachelor's degree. The complete, the CUSIP pro, the CUSIP program, CUSP, has been central to John Jay's increased four and six year graduation rates, which have risen eight percentage points and four percentage points respectively in just two years. CUNY professors testified against cuts to adjunct positions and the underfunding of full-time mental health counselors and offices on campuses. Professors also raised concerns regarding lack of COVID-19 accommodations at Hunter College High School, as well as safety and communications issues regarding COVID-19 updates on campus. Staff urged the CUNY administration to provide more timely information regarding health and safety issues and procedures on campuses. Let me thank all of those who submitted testimony. Testimonies are available for review in the Office of the Secretary. The last seven months have been challenging for everyone, and I just would like to say thank you to the entire CUNY community for your tireless efforts to keep teaching and learning alive at all of our colleges. And I'd be remiss in not reminding everyone to get out and vote. Uh, between now and election day, if you're gonna cast your ballot ballots early, or if you're going to uh, if you're gonna go and vote on election day, this is probably the most important election in my lifetime, definitely, and probably the most important election that anyone can remember in this country's history. Um, let me now ask Chancellor Matos Rodriguez for comments. Chancellor. Thank you, uh, Chair Thompson, uh, trustees, uh, presidents, vice chancellors. It's, it's great to be back with you today uh, to update you on the hard work that has been done since we last met. It's hard to believe back in, in June, um, uh, back in June. Uh, welcome to uh, our student trustee, Giovanni Picant. Uh, I look forward to working with you. I also want to welcome, this is the first board meeting for the interim vice chancellor, Denise Maybank for student affairs and enrollment management. So welcome. And, uh, and we have uh, six new presidents for whom this will be their first, uh, uh, I guess, live stream uh, meeting. And uh, President Anthony Monroe at uh, BMCC, Christine Mangino at Queensboro Community College, uh, Ken Adams over at LaGuardia Community College, uh, Robin Garrell at the Graduate Center, and the interim president, Daisy Coco de Filippis at Ostos, and Doris Sintrom at Gutman. So welcome to all of you. Back in June, uh, we were in uh, 
celebration mode for all our graduates, uh, and we were managing virtual celebrations to provide them uh, with a type of unforgettable send-off that they deserve. The resilient class of 2020 was able to maintain their focus and determination amid unprecedented challenges and distractions to finish the spring semester strong. I am so pleased to announce that this tough group of irrepressible graduates will not be deterred and that CUNY continued a decade-long trend of increasing the number of degrees bestowed, this time with more than 56,000 degrees, the second highest number in CUNY's history, a remarkable accomplishment in the midst of a pandemic. In the last decade, we have handed out half a million degrees to CUNY students a testament to the university's ability to drive social mobility and improve their fortunes. I couldn't be prouder of what we have accomplished and how the entire CUNY community has rallied and come together in this time of crisis. As we have navigated the pandemic, the inspiring nature of our response has been tempered by loss. To honor our talented and cherished faculty, staff, and students, as well as retirees and alumni whose lives were taken too soon, we created an in memoriam page on the CUNY website. We invite you to visit the page and to leave sympathy messages to celebrate and commemorate their lives and contributions and to never forget. The online memorial was one of the many steps and announcements we've made to help the university move forward and to sustain and uphold its standards of inclusion and scholarship. In August, we announced a $10 million gift from the Mellon Foundation, the largest gift that that foundation has ever given to the City University of New York, uh, and funding that provided support for a range of activities $3 million to reimagine CUNY's programs in Black, Race, and Ethnic Studies, $2.5 million for the Chancellor's Emergency Relief Fund, $2.5 million to bolster the teaching in the humanities, and $2 million to support uh, the expansion of the CUNY Culture Course, which provides pathways to careers in the arts for students from underrepresented communities. The reason why I mentioned this grant so early in my report is because the initiatives that we're pursuing through this historic gift from the Mellon Foundation provide a framework for many of the projects we are actively developing under my administration, and many of these initiatives will come up again later in my report. This ventures for some of the underpinnings of our response to the pandemic, from raising money to help the most vulnerable students to continue their studies, to connecting them with life-altering resources, to innovating pedagogy with short and long-term initiatives to improve student outcomes, to forming partnerships to foster a pipeline to industry, connecting our students to the employers who very much need them, to engaging students by reconceptualizing key assets aspects of their course of study and as a way also for us to respond to the recent calls for additional thinking and action on racial injustice. We couldn't be more grateful to the Mellon Foundation for this historic gift and for helping to drive change across our 25 campuses. Here are some of the other actions we took in preparation for the start of a mostly virtual fall semester that have allowed the university to remain on solid footing and help its students maintain their momentum and manage it, the challenges of the pandemic. CUNY, as you know, received $250 million from the federal government through the CARES Act. This funds included $180 million related to the student emergency relief most of which has already been distributed directly to 194,000 students. The remaining 132 million is being dispersed as part of the university's fiscal year 2021 budget and pending the adoption of a budget by this board. 
except for 41 million that has been allocated to the colleges to cover eligible expenses, such, the, such as reimbursement for tuition and fees, IT infrastructure, such as the purchase of laptops and hotspots, and to bolster mental health services for students. The Chancellor's Emergency Re Relief Fund has grown to 8.3 million and counting, and by the middle of November, we will have given emergency relief grants to almost 10,500 students. In addition to the Chancellor's Emergency Relief Fund, individual colleges and schools have raised more than 8.6 million on their own, enabling them to help nearly an additional 10,000 students on their campuses who were adversely impacted by the pandemic. All told, the City University of New York and its 25 campuses have raised close to 17 million over the past seven months in emergency relief funds that have helped thousands of students weather the economic impact of the pandemic. At a time when increasing numbers of students at CUNY and across the country are struggling with the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, CUNY expanded its mental health services through $5 million in funds allocated to the university through the Federal CARES Act. This support would allow CUNY students, CUNY colleges, to reach more students with face-to-face -face online counseling and other remote wellness services as they continue to pursue their degrees at distance from their professors, classmates, and campuses. CUNY's 18 senior and community college campuses will receive allocations that they can use to expand the clinical staff of their health and wellness centers and increase their capacity to provide counseling and other services using technology, distance technology. We have also continued our efforts to ease student food insecurity in addition to eradicating a key impediment to student success, it is a moral imperative for CUNY as a core New York institution. Recently, we announced a policy change to open every campus food pantry to every CUNY student, regardless of their home campus or where they live. I also applaud Governor Cuomo's new policy to reduce food insecurity by making CUNY career and technical education CTE students eligible to receive SNAP benefits, more commonly known as food stamps. Thanks to this effort, 42,000 additional CUNY students will be able to access this very effective antidote to food insecurity. Along with expanding development opportunity for students, we have also increased our support for faculty with a new focus on pedagogy to increase student outcomes. Much of the professional development training we have offered faculty in recent months has been centered on the improvement of distance learning, such as the creation of an online development, developmental workshops for more than 2,000 faculty members to improve their online instructional practices. Our CUNY, our CUNY School of Professional Studies has developed these workshops and received an award uh, for faculty development disting, uh, distinction for developing this training. I'm also proud that under the tent of the CUNY Innovative Teaching Academy, which has been our, now our hub for the professional development for our faculty, in addition to the 2,000 faculty members that were uh, trained by the School of Professional Studies, we have uh, 720 faculty members who are going to be receiving professional development through a partnership with the Association of College and University Educators, ACU, and the National Association of Systems Heads, NASH, and we have three other faculty, three, 300 other faculty from community colleges that will be receiving high-quality professional development in our partnership with Western Governors University. There is a total of 3,020 faculty members who will be receiving additional professional development to drive better outcomes for students. And as I mentioned, $2 million from that Mellon Foundation grant will go to training humanities faculty. 
We hope that the Innovative Teaching Academy will become a national model, and we are confident that CUNY will continue to maintain its status as a symbol of excellence in the field of professional development for our faculty. This comprehensive effort to provide new programs and initiatives for students and faculty was part of an all-hands-on-deck operation to prepare for the start of the fall semester. After months of planning, we welcome back our CUNY community for the start of the new academic year on August 26, with a renewed sense of energy, enthusiasm, and optimism, and with an emphasis on safety. We decided to deliver the vast majority of courses and instruction at CUNY virtually to safeguard our community's academic and personal well-being, a decision we didn't take lightly because of the value of in-person learning, but it was a move that we knew we needed to make. Almost 99% of nearly 50,000 course sections for the fall semester have been conducted via distance learning, minimizing exposure of students and faculty and their need to travel to our campuses. To enable screening, CUNY is using the Everbridge Safety Connection Pro Contact Tracing mobile app in accordance with state and city guidelines for the safe return to a campus or office. Everybody coming to our campuses must use this app. Moreover, occupancy limits are being applied and enforced in all campus spaces, including classrooms with a minimum of six feet of distance between seats. Instructors and students are required to wear masks and enhanced cleaning protocols are in place with campuses performing cleanings of each classroom multiple times per day. To make sure students have the technology that they need to carry out their academic responsibilities, we created a student technology form to help schools identify students that needed devices for the fall semester. With the support from Governor Cuomo, the university purchased more than 33,000 laptops and iPads to loan to students in need. Additionally, the university purchased and distributed approximately 4,000 Wi-Fi hotspot devices to campuses, which in turn provided them to the students. Campuses submitted individual reopening and operating plans to my office to ensure planning for a range of scenarios that reflected the engagement with campus stakeholders, administrators, faculty, staff, students, unions, alumni, and community-based organizations. These plans are in accordance with CUNY guidelines for the state's campus reopening which provide best practice recommendations and baseline requirements for gatherings in enclosed spaces, including lecture halls and classrooms, and embody the most recent New York State guidance for the reopening of higher education institutions. I am happy to report, as I've been sharing in my weekly reports to the board, that the measures have taken have meant that in two months, we've only had 24, 29 positive COVID cases so far in our CUNY uh, community. While we're doing this, CUNY continued to garner high praise for its quality and affordability with multitude of college rankings acknowledgements, uh, identifying the university's ability to elevate students from underrepresented groups. Assessments from Business Insider, the Princeton Review, Money.com Magazine, College Consensus, College Magazine, and a June report from the Brookings Institution further validated CUNY's ability to deliver a top-notch, affordable education at a time when more and more people are turning to the university to help them, help them get back on their feet. These rankings and evaluation attest to the university's commitment to helping low-income students ascend the economic ladder to the middle class and we are proud to have our mission and record of driving social mobility acknowledged and emphasized in these rankings. CUNY is also very fortunate to have many great allies to collaborate on the efforts to restore the city's brilliance and on preparing our students for life after college and contributing 
to a, a stronger economy. You are aware of the recently launched CEO Council, uh, a partnership led by JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon, uh, creating a robust pipeline uh, of good jobs for CUNY students with the top industries in New York. CUNY is also partnering with the New York State Department of Labor to help equip New Yorkers with the digital skills they need to land in-demand jobs in sectors that include data analytics, cybersecurity, digital marketing, and software development as part of an 18 million initiative from Governor Cuomo to train workers and support entrepreneurs during and after the COVID-19 pandemic. CUNY will receive $5 million over four years for this innovative, innovative program. I also want to acknowledge uh, um, in the issue of representation and civic duty um, that the public health crisis has highlighted the bearing of an accurate census council preparing for future health crisis and for deriving funding for hospitals and schools. I am sure that you are aware that despite the long odds, New York City achieved a historic 61.8% self-response rate in the 2020 census, so surpassing most major cities in the United States and the CUNY census scores played a key role in generating those results. Our students reach over 2.1 million New Yorkers through texts and calls and over 3,000 student-driven events. After starting the mobilization effort in February with mostly in-person communication, the more than 260 census court students shifted to remote platforms in mid-March. I congratulate all of us all those who participated in that important um, endeavor. While we strive to prepare the students for in-demand jobs, we also try to make other aspects of the college life easier, such as the transfer experience. At the October meeting, members of the Committee on Academic Policy Programs and Research, CAPRA, discussed the Pathways Initiative's six-year review which determined whether the Pathways General Education Framework was working as intended to support student momentum across the university. The review presented a number of key findings and recommendations, and I'm happy to report my administration has undertaken measures to improve and streamline the transit experience to make it easier and less disruptive for our students. Among the steps that we have taken, I've personally accepted the appointment to the National Task Force on Transfers for, of Credit, sponsored by the American Council of Education in January, and established a university-wide transfer steering committee in February to improve policies and practices. Executive Vice Chancellor Jose Luis Cruz and I are committed to working with the college presidents to implement the recommendations of the Pathways Initiative's six-year review and, I'm, and I plan on providing a progress review to this Board of Trustees in the spring of 2022, highlighting how campuses have advanced those recommendations and the proposals suggested by the CUNY Transfer Steering Committee to further support our students. I look forward to speaking to you then about the progress that we have made in this issue. I would close by noting the obvious. We all have had to make sacrifices this year, and we can expect to confront new challenges in the weeks and months to come. What has remained evident in the face of these difficulties, however, is the fortitude and resilience of the CUNY community. I believe we are headed in the right direction, and I believe in CUNY's ability to withstand the challenges of the moment, to coalesce around a shared vision and to attain greater degrees of success. I want to thank all the presidents, the members of the chancellery, the entire CUNY committee, and the board of trustees for their support. And even in the darkest of moments, CUNY stars continues to shine bright. Thank you so much, and I'm happy to take any questions 
from the board members. Are there any questions? All right, thank you so much, Chancellor. Let's now turn to the items requiring a vote today. Given that all board members are participating remotely, I'll read the resolutions and ask the members to respond only if they'd like to abstain or oppose an item. Otherwise, your vote will be recorded as a yes vote. If you're voting no or abstaining, please state your name and, and vote. Additionally, if you, wish, if you wish to second an item or have any questions, please state your name first for the record and let's try to avoid speaking over one another. For clarity and coordination, I'll read all of the items rather than turning to committee chairs. So away we go. Item number one, approval of minutes of the regular board meeting of June 29th, July 9th, and July 30th, 2020 be approved. May I have a second? I have a second, second Charlie. Is there any discussion on this item? We'll now vote. Only, please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item number two, Committee on Fiscal Affairs. Item number 2A, the City University of New York authorized the contract with W.W. Granger Incorporated. Item 2A is a resolution requesting the authorization of a contract with W.W. Granger Incorporated to provide maintenance, repair, and operation supplies. The university is a member the Educational and Institutional Cooperative Services Incorporated, a purchasing consortium, and pursuant to resolutions of the Board of Trustees adopted on October 29, 2018, and March 30, 2020, the university has purchased maintenance, repair, and operating supplies from W.W. Granger Incorporated under a contract offered through this consortium. The university has realized material savings through the existing contract in comparison to purchase made purchases made from a New York State Office of General Services contract with Granger. The existing consortium contract with W.W. Granger is set to expire on December 31st, 2020, and the consortium has put in place a new agreement with W.W. Granger to replace the existing contract that is similarly available for use by members. The university has determined that the new consortium contract continues to offer more advantageous pricing. The university is now seeking approval for a new contract with Granger through December 31st, 2024, with the option to renew for an additional five-year term for an annual estimated spend of $5 million. May I have a second for this item? For rare seconds. Is there discussion on this item? Any questions? Okay, we will now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item number three, Committee on Academic Policy, Programs, and Research. Item number 3A is a resolution requesting approval of the actions in the CAPR dashboard. Routine academic matters, local academic policies, and course inclusions in the university's general education program are presented to the Committee on Academic Policy, Programs, and Research in summary form. May I have a second for this item? O'Donnell, Tormey, second. Is there discussion on this item? Okay, we'll now vote. Please only respond if you like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item number four, Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration. Item 4A, the City University of New York, Approval of the Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration report. May I have a second for this item? Shorter seconds. Is there any discussion on this item? Any questions? Okay. We will now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item 4B. City University of New York extension of the Chancellor's Emergency Relief Fund. Item 4B is a resolution extending the period of the Chancellor's Emergency Relief Fund to June 30th, 2021. May I have a second for this item? Leonidas Garcia, second. Is there any discussion on this item? Trustee P. Quant, discussion? Sure. Questions? Yes. 
Yeah, I think that um, the extension of the Chancellor's Emergency Relief Fund is extremely important, and there are many concerns that students are um, have and struggles they are experiencing during the pandemic, despite that we are months into this. And I think it's important as a university, we look into ways we do comprehensive analysis, understanding the issues that students are facing beyond um, financial implications, such as uh, mental health services or other services and support student, students need. Being that this is a pandemic, uh, many things are affecting them. And I think as a university, how do we look at and we look into beyond the issues that are just the general ones and seeing how we can hear the student concerns and move forward to trying to tackle those issues. Am I still on? Yes, we're. St I am. We're still here. There's. Okay. We're I hear you. Here? Okay. We're here. We're here. I don't know what happened. Maybe Bill. Are you there, Bill? We seem to have lost the chair for a moment. I am checking on him. Yep, he got disconnected. He's dialing back in. Hello. There we go. You're here. You made it. Sorry about, Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> I know someone, it's called, I'm using my iPad, and someone dialed on my phone, and it disconnected me. So my apologies. Okay. Uh, where were we up to? Where were we up to? So, uh, uh, Trustee was... Right. Trustee Picant made a statement. Right. Okay. Um, other comments on, on this item? Okay, so let's, uh, please, okay, we'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item 4C, Queensboro Community College, naming of the, jo the Dr. Joseph Bertorelli Mathematics and Computer Science Classroom. Item 4C is a resolution named the Dr. Joseph Bertorelli Mathematics and Computer Science Classroom at Queensboro Community College in recognition of Dr. Joseph's distinguished service to the college and its contribution in the field of mathematics education, Queensboro Community College enthusiastically supports the naming of S-213 on the second floor of the science building at Queensboro Community College, the Dr. Bertarelli Mathematics and Computer Science Classroom. May I have a second for this item? Shorter seconds. Is there any discussion on this item or questions? We'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item 4D, the City College of New York, naming of the Richard J. Henley and Susan L. Davis, RNED, deanship at the Colin Powell School for Civic and Global Leadership. Item 4D is a resolution naming the Richard J. Henley and Susan L. Davis, RNED, Deanship at the Colin Powell School for Civic and Global Leadership at the City College of New York. To celebrate and honor Mr. Henley and Dr. Davis' generous support of the Colin Powell School for Civic and Global Leadership, the City College enthusiastically recommends the naming of the Richard J. Henley and Susan L. Davis, 
R-N-E-D-D, deanship. May I have a second for this item? Obafel seconds. Any discussion on this item? Okay, we'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item number five, Committee on Facilities, Planning and Management. Item 5A, City University of New York authorizes a lease amendment at 875 Avenue of the Americas. Item 5A is a resolution requesting authorization of a lease amendment with old 875 OLD 875 LLC and new 875 LLC to extend the term of the lease at 875 Avenue of the Americas, New York, New York in accordance with the university's review of its lease facilities and its goal to reduce operating costs to the university, the university will only be renewing the lease for a portion of the current space, the sixth and seventh floors only, and relocating the programs and staff on the ninth floor to other university facilities. Such space consolidation will yield approximately $4.5 million of operating savings to the university. May I have a second for this item? Are the media sold the south seconds? Any discussion on this item or questions? We'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item number six, City University of New York, amendment of Article 15 of the University Bylaws to reflect changes in the new federal title nine regulations prohibiting sex discrimination in education programs. The university's policy on sexual misconduct was revised effective August 14, 2020, to comply with recent amendments to federal Title IX regulations. To best comply with the new regulations as well as New York State law, it is necessary to amend language contained in Article 15 of the university bylaws to conform the revised disciplinary procedures relating to students called for under the new federal Title IX regulations. These amendments to Article 15 of the University Bylaws are also necessary to ensure that the process for addressing sexual misconduct allegations made against students under the university's, university's revised policy on sexual misconduct are addressed appropriately in accordance with the new regulations. May I have a second for this item? Your o'clock second. Is there any discussion on this item or questions? We'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. <clears throat> that item is approved. Item number seven, City University of New York, approval to continue the offering of online instruction for the delivery of courses in, dis in degree and non-degree programs and the offering of remote support services for the spring 2021 semester. The university, through this resolution, recognizes that, one, by reducing the density of individuals on the university campuses, two, offering classes and support services in a primarily online and remote format, and three, continuing to build a robust slate of programs that enhance the ability of faculty, staff, and students to teach, support, and learn online and remotely, the university can better ensure the continued health, safety, and welfare of its students, faculty, and staff and further ensure a continuity of educational curricula and better prepare and better outcomes for our students and preserve the availability of its of its physical space for those academic programs and support services that require them. May I have a second? Pereira seconds. Discussion on this item and just one quick question, Chancellor, I understand that we are providing this opportunity. Uh, but if situations change, we can revert back. Am I correct? Absolutely. I think one of the things that makes this conversation somewhat different when we voted on the resolution on July 9th, right, which was endorsing our plans for a mostly online fall, was that now we have the uh, reopening plans that have been done under the state uh, guidelines. So we have a very concrete map now uh, if we're gonna bring additional students to campus, right? Because the conditions have been proved, because there's a vaccine, uh, all the different things that, that my 
that might change things on the ground. We now have a very detailed plan uh, that's available on land that everybody knows uh, how we intend to bring people back in a, in a safe way. So in some ways we have the experience having been in this way in, in, in the fall that we didn't have before, uh, and we have very detailed plans to be able to transition should the conditions of the ground uh, permit to do so. So we're in a much, much better scenario than where we were when we voted um, on a similar resolution back in July 9th. Okay. I believe this was seconded already. Um, am I correct, yes. Gail? Question. Yes, you're correct. Question it was one. Martin Burke. Other, questions. Other questions? Go ahead. Uh, I have a question, Martin Burke. Uh, either for the chancellor or for EVC crews, and that's what spring? Uh, am I to understand or the faculty to understand that spring 21 semester could be continued through the summer 21 semester or will it end with the spring semester? I ask because on page 18 of the amended calendar uh, <clears throat> policy, the third whereas does refer to the summer 2020 extension which went under the Governor Cuomo's spring 2020 intervention and I would like to know for the record when has spring sprung <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I am not versed in 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 the timing of the seasons right but this is a resolution that is really geared to uh, being ready for the spring 20 21 semester and I would imagine that we'll look at the summer uh, 2021 uh, at some point later in the spring and a follow-up so, if you don't mind Chancellor uh, would that possibly entail yet another resolution coming either to the capper or coming to the board in this setting that's the way that we've been doing things, and we like to keep it that way. We'll have to also work with all the, um, you know, the regulatory uh, bodies that guide some of these things, you know, the Department of Education, NICE, and uh, middle states. But certainly, yes, I think that um, uh, I think many of us hope that by by that summer, right, that we can recapture a lot more of the. Um, um, uh, of things as they were before COVID, uh, but I think that's a conversation to be had in the in the spring. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item? Trustee Pequant, question. Yes. Um, I understand so as a, during the pandemic. I understand during the pandemic now, um, board meetings now are teleconference, but I do think as a board we should try to well maybe we don't use um zoom as a software but any type of software um so we can have a more of a human interaction and see each other face to face being that students are required to go on zoom and we expect our faculty faculty to teach on zoom i think us moving as a, as a board to do that um so members yeah. of the public when they're live streaming they can have a more human interaction with us is can that be done moving forward the secretary gail uh, yes, actually, uh, the chair and I have discussed this, and we tried some technology in the in the um, spring that did not work out well. But we now have a new Zoom platform, and our next meeting is slated to be on Zoom. So, thank you okay, for sharing those you. concerns. We we agree. Thank you. Will we be required? Will trustees be required to wear uh, jackets and ties? The men. Uh, not, for, not Charlie. Not for you, because that would be different than you normally show up at meetings. So that would no. be what. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we'll only see you from the neck up. So no, we don't have to. You don't have to wear a tie. <laughs> or the, be sure that's all you would get. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving right exactly. along. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Item number. Item number eight. <laughs> 
All right. Any other discussion on this item? Okay. We'll now vote. Please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose. That item is approved. Item number eight, resolution of appreciation for Timothy Hunter. I'm going to ask the secretary of the board to please read our resolution. Item number eight, resolution of appreciation uh, for Timothy Hunter, whereas Timothy Hunter was elected by his fellow students as chairperson for the University Student Senate in October 2019, serving a one-year term, and whereas chairperson for USS, the University Student Senate, Mr. Hunter served as the only student member of the Board of Trustees representing the interests of more than 500,000 students, And whereas Mr. Hunter fiercely represented CUNY students during one of the most challenging years in the university's history, and whereas Mr. Hunter, a New York Tech Tech 2020 graduate and a second-generation City University of New York student, sharing this proud alumni status with his mother and Banker Evers College graduate, and whereas Mr. Hunter started first... uh, his experience with CUNY was City Tech when at age 15 he participated through his high school, the City Polytechnic High School for Architecture and Engineering, in their renowned 9 through 14 partnership with City Tech. And whereas Mr. Hunter proudly served as the undergraduate student government president at New York City College of Technology, and whereas the University Student Senate recognized his leadership skills and awarded him the Outstanding Leadership Award for his advocacy during the 2018-2019 academic year, and whereas Mr. Hunter exemplifies CUNY's motto of education to free people is the hope of humanity through his commitment to high school students as a technical education instructor for the New York City Department of Education, and whereas as Timothy Hunter was a valued voice on the Board of Trustees, now, therefore, be it resolved that the members of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York express their sincere thanks and deepest appreciation to Timothy, to Timothy Hunter for his partnership, determination, devotion, and outstanding service to the City University of New York, and be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees extends its best wishes for his continued success in all of his future endeavors. May I have a second for this? Sure, a second. second. You look up, please, second. second. Before I go to other discussion on this item or other comments, I'm going to point to, I will take the privilege of starting out. Um, I'm going to miss Timothy. He is an extraordinary person. Uh, it has been a pleasure to serve on the board with him. He is... I will miss him. I will miss him both personally and professionally. He happens to be just a great human being. I've told him privately. I will say it publicly. I expect great things of him. He is one of the not finer students I met. He is just one of the finer people, one of the more intuitive. Um, He brought a very special quality to our board. And not to say that it will be difficult to follow him. He is, it's just him not being here does create a bit of a void because he was that good and that thoughtful and that constructive. So I've said to him, anything I can do to help him in the future, I will be there because I think that highly of him. Um, with that, any other comments that anybody would like to make? Trustee, do you have a comment? Excuse me. Go ahead, Trustee. Go ahead. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Trustee Clark. Go ahead. Oh, now go ahead. Um, Let me just say the pleasure it was to work with Tim. As I've worked with four or five student trustees, and he's been one of the finest. They've all been good, but he exceeded a lot of that because he went beyond the call of duty to make sure that he stays in touch and want to make sure that all of the students within CUNY could feel his presence and know that he was there to represent them all. I will miss him. Mm -hmm. I have his number um, and will make sure that I stay in touch with him also, Mr. Chairman, because he is that good. Yes, he is. Myra? Thank you so much. yeah, I think it might have been Lorraine, but I'll, I'll jump in uh, after, oh, sorry. after Lorraine. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, Lorraine. All right. <laughs> you can see that, Myra, anytime. Lorraine, go ahead. 
So my, uh, okay, fine. Uh, age, I guess it's age. We're going in age category. Uh, uh, Timothy, I just wanted to say that I, uh, you know, echo everything that, that, that the chairman and uh, trustees said, you know, you are, you were, an, you are an exceptional human being, but what I love so much about working with you was how thoughtful you were and how inclusive you were in all of the conversations and always wanted to look at the other perspective. You had to make some tough choices and some tough calls, and you did them with authenticity but also with a level of integrity. So I am yeah. just thrilled by your leadership style. I am in awe of it, and I want you to know that you take my number because if you ever need anything, this is one person that has your back forever. So please call on me, and you, um, I, you will have, you will, have, you will make great things happen. But you know, like all of us, we need a village. I'm going to be part of your village. There you go. Other comments? Hi. Yes. <laughs> um, hi. It's. It's Sandra. Uh, I just echo all that has been said so far from the chairman and and other trustees, but just a feeling of incredible dedication you had, uh, Timothy, and um, your your uh, willingness to 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 help and and your commitment. And as far as our hope. For the future, if it's in your hands, I know that things will come out very well. So thank you. Thank you for uh, being such a partner uh, as a board member and a partner uh, with uh, CUNY and as a friend. And this is Charlie Shorter. Uh, agreeing with everything that's being said, but wanting to add one of Timothy's great traits, which I hope he carries forward, was he never hesitated to, how shall I say this, uh, prod trustees and others to think in different mm -hmm. directions and to move um, very aggressively. And that's a great trait that I hope he takes forward with us. Yes. Trustee Piquant? I yes. would just like to say... I would just like to say, um, for me, working with Timothy for the past year, being his vice chair of his affairs and representing the students of CUNY, um, you know, this is, was a very personal journey for me, and we've learned so much and have changed so much um, because of Timothy's leadership, and it was an honor and a pleasure serving under his administration, and I know he will go on to do great things, but Timothy is just one of the many students who are exactly the epitome of what CUNY is. I, I have eight um, aunts and uncles who have graduated from CUNY. Um, I, my father used to teach at CUNY, so I know what CUNY can do for us and other students, and I'm here to continue this fight and challenge each other um, and students to know that this is their fight too, to fight for a better institution and a better society moving on forward. Leonidas Garcia, um, I should have gone before uh, Lorraine. I will learn my lesson for, for that one. Um, but Timothy, thank you for all you do. Uh, <laughs> You make us all, all proud. And, um, you know, I remember seeing you on the news one day and you had a mask and they didn't have your name and just hearing your voice and just the eloquency of what you were saying. I was like, Timothy, is this you? <laughs> and, of course, it was you, always representing our communities, both in school and out of school. Um, and, uh, you know, looking forward to just following your star. I just wanted to thank you for all you've done. Anybody else? I believe, Can I jump in? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Chancellor. Well, I, I, on behalf of the entire team uh, of, of the Chancellery, uh, we want to uh, give our gratitude to Tim. Uh, we enjoyed, I, I, there's, there was no one in our team, uh, whoever didn't enjoy uh, working with Tim, meeting with him, uh, learning about what the students uh, needed and their perspective on on the issues. So uh, I think we we've made better choices on decisions because of his uh, his insights. So um, it always takes a toll 
on or the student trustees because there's a lot of things to uh to to juggle and and he did it with great um with great dignity uh with a sense of humor um and uh we'll we'll miss him and and wish him the best and uh and look forward to working with uh giovanni and the rest of the new team also exactly thank you chancellor any other comments if not we're going to vote all right we'll now vote please only respond if you'd like to abstain or oppose that item of appreciation is approved and again thank you timothy for everything um the executive committee of the board of trustees met on august 12 2020 and took action which have been posted publicly on the board of trustees website and are additionally being reported today for informational purposes there's no need to vote on this notification. Let me now call on the secretary to present. So the first item, uh, there are six of them, and I'll just read them. Authorization to purchase um, Wi-Fi hotspot and, or at MiFi devices for emergency distribution to students needing broadband internet access in response to the continuing COVID-19 pandemic health emergency authorization of a construction license agreement and an easement agreement with the New York City Transit Authority to grant temporary access for construction staging and a permanent easement at a plaza adjacent to Ostos Community College for subway station improvements to comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 as amended uh, the Eugenio, uh, sorry, for the community college. Approval of the acceptance of the Andrew W. Mellon uh, Foundation's $2.5 million donation to the CUNY Chancellor's Emergency Relief Fund. Authorization of an amendment of the City University of New York Policy on Sexual Misconduct, Policy 7.142, to incorporate required changes resulting from the United States Department of Education adoption of new regulations under Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972, uh, the 20 U.S.C. Chapter 38. Authorization of the City University of New York to enter into certain supplemental agreements with the Professional Staff Congress, CUNY, to one, expand, extend tenure deadlines for certain college laboratory technicians, senior college laboratory technicians, and chief college laboratory technicians. Three, sorry, my apologies, two, extend the time to secure a certificate of continuous employment for certain lecturers, and three, permit an extension of time for the use of annual leave above the contractual cap from August 31st, 2020 to December 31st, 2020, subject to certain conditions. And finally, an authorization for the chancellor to engage, negotiate, and enter into certain supplemental agreements and arrangements with the university's classified and professional staff during the period of the COVID-19 public health emergency. Okay, thank you, Gail. Uh, I think that's it. There being no further business, uh, a motion to adjourn this meeting. Do I have a second? Oberfeld, second. Let me see Quant, second. All right. Mm -hmm.